Good morning to all and welcome to the worship service at the Kirk of Kansas City. I'm Scott White. It is the fifth Sunday in Lent. It is March 17th. Greetings and peace of Christ to all, including this week's online participants. We're glad we're together and we welcome your interactions with reactions and comments. Happy St. Patrick Day to all. He is the patron saint of Ireland and he is the one of the prayer that goes Christ with me, Christ before me, Christ behind me, Christ in me, Christ beneath me, Christ above me, Christ on my right, Christ on my left, Christ when I lie down, Christ when I sit down, I arise today. May your blessings outnumber your shamrocks. We thank the many volunteers who make Kirk events and services possible and special. Volunteers are always needed. We use Sign Up Genius online and sign up sheets out in the hallway. The membership and engagement team meets today after service in Knox Forum. The session meets this Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. also in Knox Forum. Congregational members are always welcome to attend and observe. Reminder that the third Sunday of every month, so this month today, is Kirk Bag Day, donations of non-perishable food and household products are received and are delivered to our community service partner, Grace United Community Ministries, to help feed our neighbors. Grace is at Benton Boulevard and East 9th Street. The Kirk Lent and Easter service project this year is Snack Packs for the Homeless, also a Matthew 25 initiative. Snack Packs for the Homeless will be assembled after service on Sunday, April 7th. There's a sign up for it. It is generous and notable that four of the six food components have been filled, only two are not yet filled. Needed are about 120 packages of cheese crackers and about 120 protein meal kits. Kirk Chili and Soup Cook-Off this Saturday, March 23rd at 5.30 p.m. Sign Up Genius and Sign Up Sheet in the hallway. The Kirk One Great Hour of Sharing goal this year is $500. As of a couple days ago, Friday, offerings totaled $415. Things to know today about the upcoming great days are Holy Week Spirituality Center, Hours as on the card inserts and back of bulletin and Friday e-news. Monday, Thursday, 7 p.m. Good Friday, 12 noon. Easter Sunday, sunrise service, 7 a.m. Followed by breakfast, egg hunt, and crafts. Worship at 10 a.m. Easter invite cards are in your bulletins, and if you'd like additional cards, hospitality ambassadors will hand them out there at the end of service. We thank Kathy Cole for her particular efforts and labors in this area. <clears throat> Please invite someone to Holy Week and Easter Sunday celebrations this year. And if you know of a community bulletin board where you'd like to tack on a few of these, please, by all means, take some extras and do so. Prayer concerns are Helen Hathorn has died. 
we know that means that the world is less, but the world was more because of Helen Hathorn. Rachel is a young family member of Cheryl Keimig, who was recently diagnosed with esophageal cancer and is preparing for surgery and radiation. Now let us quiet our hearts and minds and prepare ourselves for the worship of Trinity God. Please stand in body, mind, or soul and join with me in the call to worship. This late Lent, we begin to hear the call of Easter. In response, we offer our prayer and praise, our silence and song. The example of Jesus is wondrous. In response, we offer our hearing and healing, our solidarity and help. The work of Jesus is freedom for all the people, and we are thankful. We are set free to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with our God. Come, let us worship God. Let us worship indeed.
say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sin, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive us and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. In humility and faith, let us confess together, saying, God of mercy, you sent Jesus Christ to seek and save the lost. We confess that we have strayed from you and turned aside from your way. We are misled by pride, for we see ourselves pure when we are strained and great when we are small. We have failed in love, neglected justice, and ignored your truth. Amen. But God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he loved us even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. Friends, hear this good news. By grace, you have been saved, and in Christ, you are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. Now let's say what we believe using the words from the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. And let us pray. Heal these ones of anything unhealed in them. Heavenly Father, in this very time, in these very days, as they have prayed healing for others, heal also them. Relieve these ones of burden. Show your kindness and your power. Your children here open their hands to receive every one of your gifts. We pray equitable just and neighborly resolution of world conflicts. We ask so much, yet you are God of the great and the difficult, and you are God of straight paths. Provide them for your people. We ask you to bless our neighbors and our enemies and to repair us of any ill will. 
We pray safety and wellness for the children and the youth and bless them with important learning and growth in the remainder of the semester. Uphold, bless, and reward richly their teachers. Thank you for Rachel of Cheryl's family. We commend Rachel to you for your kindness and your power. Remove this cancer from her. Thank you for Helen Hathorn, for the family from which she comes, for the marriage of Helen and Wendell, and now for their family. Let your spirit be close with the family, neighbors, and friends for trust, hope, and insight into all things open to your people. Now hear us praying as the one who came from you in humility and whom you raised in power taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we pray for illumination, let us open our hearts, our minds and our eyes so we can hear, see, feel, and experience God's word. Let us pray. Gracious God, we do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from your mouth. Make us hungry for this heavenly food, that it may nourish us today in the ways of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. Hear the word of the Lord. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judea. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them out of the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke. Though I was their husband, says the Lord, but this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of these to the greatest, says the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more.
New Testament, the 12th chapter of John's Gospel, where it reads, Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew, then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will be my servant also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled. And what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven, I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. Let's share together in the response of the people. This is the word of faith that we proclaim. These words are trustworthy and true. Thanks be to God. Grace to you all and peace from the risen and living Lord. On Easter Sunday, the joy will be great and the awe. And for a moment, we'll share in some fear. In one spot, it actually says terror, amazement, fear, terror, as they fled from the empty tomb, apparently because everything is now different. Everything is now different, and there are things we just haven't known about that have entered our world. On Good Friday, backing up, man, are we going to see the whole thing? Because we're going to hear the whole thing, the events of Good Friday, all of them told by one of the Gospels, John. We will offer traditional, humble prayer and song. On Monday, Thursday, there is a new commandment, and the love Jesus shows is bigger than foot washing. Yeah, I think it is way bigger than foot washing. In service, we'll be fed and we'll enjoy each other's company in Jesus' name. Continuing to back up on Palm and Passion Sunday, which is next Sunday, focus with me please on a phrase this week so that we can reflect on it together next Sunday. Jesus entered Jerusalem with the disciples from Galilee and from Judea. It was a joyous occasion. Some number of people happily greeted them. 
and he went up to the temple. It says in Mark, he looked around at everything. Then, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. Reflect with me, please, on that phrase, he looked around at everything. And when we're in very public places, or specifically places of power, and we look around at everything, what do we see? Next Sunday, we'll touch heads on that, as we must, for it is Lent. Today, you may want to hear from me what is this work of Christ on the cross that we are so baptized into, that is so fascinating to us, that the story so goes to and then so goes from what is this work of Christ on the cross? Atonement doctrine, atonement theory, my take on things, my read on things that you may want to hear from me today. All right. Well, there are at least seven of them seven understandings. Earliest was that it was victory. It was great victory. It was the victory over the oppositional and fallen power that had enticed and enslaved humanity in the first place. We get that from Today's scripture, where he says, now the ruler of this world will be driven out. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out, defeated, driven out. And that's it. That's the work of Christ on the cross, that somehow the ruler of this world is vanquished, that's been messing with us in the first place. Not everything is your fault. There are atonement doctrines that will tell you it is. Not this one, not the earliest of them. Call this one Christ Victor. Next, much the same, but that a ransom was involved, payment for things stolen to get them back. Not everything is your fault. You can have some fault in this, but you don't get all the fault in this. Call this one Christ Ransom. We've been purchased, bought back, redeemed, released, set free. We get to middle, middle ages, and next comes Christ propitiation, and one like it that a great debt, a great debt would be owed being reconciled to a just and honorable God, Jesus is payment of the debt that we cannot pay. These have some problems, these ones, but they do honor Jesus. Also from the Middle Ages, and make no mistake about it, the reformers held very dearly to many of these understandings, to many of them, is the notion that the cross is the great revelation. It is the great revelation 
of who we are and who God is. You see it all right there on the cross. The cross, it's the great showing that we most need to see and to know about who we are and who God is. Who we are is thugs, thieves, trespassers, trespassers against what is God, trespassers even on God, worse, that we would do this. Who God is, is love. Who would do this work on a cross to show us who we are and who God is with arms outstretched wide to hold the whole world. Nevertheless, God with us and for us. This one comes with a lot of power to transform. It changes you when you start to see things this way. Continuing, John Calvin, a notable thinker in our tradition, interpreted the events of Good Friday, Jesus dying on a cross, as him substituting himself for the punishment, the punishment due to each of us, the verdict of God in the courtroom of God. This one, too, has some problems, but it does rather honor Jesus. Another is that the cross is a pungent critique of empire, state, power, will to power. To eternal salvation in God, this one adds an earthly salvation, is what Jesus was trying to accomplish. Jesus trying to redeem society and to re-offer it as a gift to God who so loves the world and to us. Well, there are some, there are more. There are several more. This goes forward. For the cross is endlessly fascinating. It is. Do you know it isn't just to you and to me, but philosophers have been endlessly fascinated by the cross, but that psychologists have been endlessly fascinated by the cross. Evolutionary biologists Evolutionary biologists who are spiritual saying, what's going on here? There's something going on here that perplexingly is so hopeful. Everybody hears about the cross and wonders, wonders. Each understanding probably makes a contribution to the truth, and probably not even any number of them together manage to express the fullness of it, the fullness of the gift. Do you have an atonement doctrine that makes the most sense to you? That's the one I'm most happy makes the most sense to you. What I'm looking for is that which centers you, inspires you, gives you hope, makes meaning. But let me just say, careful, careful of not continuing to explore the rest of them. If we didn't think it's the one about ransom, 
for example, well, sooner or later we'll run into Jesus saying, for the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. If we didn't think it's the one about debt, sooner or later we'll run into the parable of the unforgiving servant where a servant is forgiven by his master an astronomical debt, but then doesn't forgive one of his servants a small debt. The disposition at the end of this parable is frightful. If we didn't think it's the one where Christ shows our unlove and his love, we'll nevertheless sing the phrase of the hymn that goes, see from his head, his hands, his feet, sorrow and love flow mingled down, sorrow and love. Keep a beginner's mind or an open mind about these understandings of our ancestors for the pleasing of God. I think we would agree that that would please God a rich and full acceptance of a rich gift. And each understanding calls for some response, for some specific response. Wouldn't the one who sees in the cross forgiveness of debt be forgiving of debt? Wouldn't one who sees in the cross the incorrect application of human power seek to apply their power more properly? And you know you do have power. Wouldn't the one who simply sees in the cross the perfect solidarity of God with humanity then have the question, how's my solidarity? How is my solidarity with others, including the ones who aren't worthy of it? I tell you, It'll stretch us both in understanding and in response. Forbid it, Lord, that I should boast, save in the death of Christ my God. Love so amazing, so divine, demands my soul, my life, my all. Oh, the purposefulness of Jesus. And what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Oh, the mystery of Jesus, him manifest in the shared meal with the people in his name. Oh, the empty tomb of Jesus, the resurrection and the ascension of Jesus who goes ahead to prepare a place for us. This story draws people into response, hope, and life. Do you believe in the salvation of the world? I can't think why we would believe that the world is, which it is, that the world needs to be saved, which it clearly does, and not that there is some way, somehow, someone who does it. So may you be improved in Christ on your journey through your attention to these things and how you would like to go forward in fullness of life. 
May you be struck that a gift is given you and that it is free. It is for healing. It is to set us free for a relationship with God that really cannot end. This is the good news of late Lent. Let us proceed then and welcome the renewal of our lives in the Easter mystery. Amen. Each week we come to the Kirk to experience the presence of God through song, through word, and the people surrounding us. Speaking of which, please make sure you press the friendship pad so we can celebrate who we worship with and be able to greet one another. We also take time to give thanks for the blessings you have and to acknowledge our own personal responsibilities of giving back to God. We give of ourselves with time and talents but we also share the gifts we have and that we have been given. If you are on site, the offering plates are right outside of the narthex door. And if you're, on, if you're worshiping with us online, you may call the church office to find out how you can give and be a part of the ministries that we have here at the Kirk. Together, we are called to dedicate ourselves to God that loves us and challenges us to be the church in the hands and feet of Christ. May we give freely and a lot. Amen. Let us sing. Now let us pray as we dedicate our offerings of all we have and all we can do and all we can give. God of compassion, we praise you that you look upon our frail lives with love and understanding and that you desire for us all new life in Christ. By your spirit, strengthen our souls to be brave and bold in Christ's service. Take our offerings and use them and us for your purposes. Amen.
when you go in peace to love and serve each other and your neighbors and the Lord and to let yourself be served and to receive every free and generous gift of God. The grace of the risen and living Lord, the love of God and the companionship of the Holy Spirit is with you all. Amen. Thank you.